Hey, good morning. I'm Kenny Broad. I'm a professor at the University of Miami, and I'm here at BioBlitz. And actually, BioBlitz is in my backyard this year, so I grew up in Miami. This is my ancestral home. But so it, it's to me, it's kind of a rare opportunity to see a place that I take for granted, focused on in so much detail. And part of why you take it for granted is we live in a big city, but it's really a rare city. Uh, we don't have heavy industry. We have the Gulf Stream out in the ocean that uh, does well for flushing out pollution. And we still have a beautiful environment. And we're right at the edge with a lot of issues uh, because of the population growth. So this is a chance, hopefully, to put it on the map for people, not people far away, but for our own local community. And that's one of the issues. We worry about things far away, but we don't take care of what we have right beneath our noses. Now, it seems that the park is indeed a national treasure, but there are a lot of threats. What would you say are the biggest issues in this part of the world for the marine environment? So, the marine environment here is kind of battling a bunch of different issues. Some of them are real local issues. We just have too many people, even well-intentioned people. You put enough people on the water, things are going to fly out of their boat, plastic, garbage, things like that. Small little oil and gas spills at marinas as people fill up their tanks. Anchor damage, because we don't have mooring buoys everywhere. So you kind of have the, the local impact. But then we have big picture problems. So we've got what goes on with agriculture a couple hundred miles away actually makes its way down through the canals that are used for flood protection out into the bay. So when we start loading up nutrients from agriculture and sugar cane industry, those start uh, algal, algal blooms or eutrophication. So that's a big one that's kind of at a regional level. And then you have the international threat, which is global sea level rise and ocean acidification, all those issues related to, to global warming and greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So that's something maybe further down the road but we're extremely, extremely vulnerable here, not just from an ecosystem standpoint, but all our, our at least all our legal economy <laughs> relies on tourism to a large part. So if we get a little bit of sea level rise, the same storms will erode a lot more of the beaches and land, and uh, most people come to be on the beach on the water. Part of the Bioblitz, as you say, is to put the park on the map, and Miami is just to cross the water over there, millions of people, and I guess a lot of them come here, those that do come here to do these water sports and have this impact on the environment. But the ocean moves you in special ways. What would you say to the people who live here about what's in their backyard and why the ocean is so important to us humans? I guess you, we can think about why the ocean is so important to us, maybe from two different sides. The very cold-hearted, calculated, rational side that says it's money. It's, it provides us with services, it provides us with shoreline protection, it provides us with industry, uh, tourist industry base, it provides us with a fishing industry, it, all those kind of economic reasons, but at least when I come out here and from growing up here, what uh, I think there's a good saying that goes, I'd rather be out on the boat thinking about church than in church thinking about being out on the boat. So whatever someone's spiritual side, I think it often comes out when you're in this wide expanse because you realize how little we are as an individual in relation to the wider world. Yet when you add all these individuals up, you start to see what we can do to that same world. So for me, it's just a place where I tend to be pretty cynical, but when I get out on the water, I, I can be a little more contemplative. Can you tell us a little bit about your own research that you're in charge of? You've got some students here today. Right. Um, so at the University of Miami, I teach environmental anthropology. The idea being we can't just understand the ecosystem by excluding humans from the ecosystem. So how do we interact with, in this case, the ocean, the bay? What are our perceptions of what's going on in the water? What are our perceptions of the risk of what we do and what goes on in the community? So I try not to be an advocate, but rather to figure out what people are thinking, what people are actually doing. And that can be used for education, hopefully. It can be used for a better understanding of how we perceive the world around us.